So good morning everyone. Uh, today I will uh, talk about the uh, work I did at CEA as a, an intern uh, last summer. So um, this work wa was on, uh, as it says in the title, uh, extending the computation of the DMFT uh, to the K KGB parallelization because uh, it was only uh, implemented with the basic parallelization of Abinit. So first of all, I will uh, make a little reminder on the parallelization in Abinit. Then I will explain how uh, the DMFT uh, is incompatible with the uh, KGB parallelization. Then I will explain how I solve the problem. And finally, I will show you some uh, validation process and uh, results. So, um, as you know, uh, Abinit have two modes of parallelization, one basic mode and uh, one more advanced uh, that is enabled uh, with the parallel KGB uh, keyword. So, uh, both modes uh, ch share a, a characteristic to uh, parallelize over K points. Uh, because uh, the block theorem uh, make it really easy to to do because it's the uh, k points are orthogonal so uh, it's mostly trivial uh, but uh, KGB parallelization can add either a parallelization of on plane waves or on bounds uh, depending on the context so uh, for example you may have a few bands on a given CPU and all bands uh, for uh, and all bands. Um, also, in the local uh, context, you can have other kind of parallelization, like parallelization over atoms or PAW projectors uh, in PAW. Uh, but it's less important for me. So uh, you all know the formulation of the density uh, in terms of occupation and uh, concham vectors. Uh, this is the formula for DFT. And it is uh, obviously easy to uh, parallelize over bounds because you can uh, compute separately chunks of the sum. And it's obviously made in uh, real space because you would have a convolutional product to compute in a recipro reciprocal space. So to compute the density, the main, um, the main uh, routine is macro. Um, at the beginning of macro, the data are laid uh, in the linal layout, because uh, before uh, the routine, uh, there are linal, uh, linear algebra operation done. So uh, mostly diagonalization of the Hamiltonian and work on the uh, wave functions. Um, so it means that um, the data are parallelized over the uh, plane waves and you have all bands on uh, one CPU. Uh, then you have a transposition of coefficient to uh, gather all plane waves and uh, uh, distribute bands. So you can do uh, FFT to go to uh, real space and then to compute the density in the natural uh, layout. So in the PAW part of the density, uh, there is always a parallelization over bands because there is no uh, plane waves and the components of uh, PAW are a lot more, uh, are a lot fewer than uh, plane waves, so you can't get much from uh, parallelizing, parallelizing on them. So you have to parallelize on bands. Uh, so that's all. You mean the, the, the in steer definition? Or yeah. Is it in steer part? In PAW, uh, it's always yeah. steer. But because in the PAW basis, yeah. you nevertheless have plane waves. No, yeah, of course. Uh, I mean. It's, uh, I just meant that uh, since you don't have plane wave by definition, uh, you have to f do another kind of parallelization, which is on bands, because it's the band, the band decomposition that 
is able to give you the more components, so the more parallelization. So um, now we'll see why the DMFT uh, is incompatible uh, by default with uh, this parallelization. So DMFT is, uh, one, is a theory developed to uh, address the problem of uh, highly correlated uh, electrons in lanthanides and actinides and transition metals. Uh, it deals with uh, non-local density and uh, it uses a totally different formalism from uh, DFT. To integrate it uh, into Abinit, we have to find an interface with the DFT, which is uh, the, the computation of the density. So it is possible in DMFT to compute uh, occupations that are non-diagonal. Uh, and with the, the Kohn-Sham vectors of the DFT, you can compute a density that is compatible with uh, DFT. So I remind again the formula for, for, for DFT uh, density. And when you, when you go to uh, DMFT, you have this non-diagonal term and you have a double indexed uh, sum over the bounds. So the problem now is that we have to compute the product of two arbitrary bands uh, that in uh, band parallelization are uh, maybe uh, not on the same CPU. So we have to uh, solve this uh, separation of data to, to do the computation. Um, so uh, the idea for the plane wave part is to uh, take advantage of the transition between layout uh, that we have at the beginning of macro. Uh, so we will uh, try to modify the data uh, to go from a DFT, DMFT uh, non-diagonal occupation from something compatible with uh, DFT. So I uh, introduced some notations. So let's uh, note, note uh, A, a vector, uh, which components are the quantum vectors, the components, uh, the vectors of our base. And we note uh, F, a matrix, uh, which components are the occupations. Uh, so we notice that the uh, notation for uh, the density in DMFT can be rewritten uh, with a matrix product. Uh, and um, when we diagonalize F, we, we see appearing um, a product that we can refactor to have something that look a lot like the original expression. But now in the center, we have a diagonal matrix. So if we, uh, if we note uh, the components of this uh, diagonal matrix D hat and the vectors of uh, the array product uh, phi e, phi hat e, uh, we can rewrite this project uh, into this. And we now have uh, a formula of the DMFT density that is analogous to the DFT density. And so we use this uh, transformation to uh, obtain uh, occupation and concham vectors that we will feed to the normal uh, DFT routine. And uh, this will give us the density uh, for the plane wave part. For the PAW part, so as I said, we are always in uh, band uh, parallelization, so we can't use that kind of trick. Also, uh, the PAW part is really light uh, compared to the uh, plane wave part because there are less components. Um, so uh, we can just use point-to-point uh, -point MPI communications. Uh, we will uh, exchange the information that we are lacking and we will compute it uh, in a more naive way. So the algorithm to uh, exchange, uh, to, to do the uh, data exchange uh, is the following. So uh, not all CPUs uh, use correlated bands. So we first check if the current CPU do. 
and then we have a loop over the bounds. Uh, and uh, if uh, if the CPU needs uh, the bound, uh, if the CPU has the bound, uh, it will start sending it to all uh, CPUs that need it. And if it needs it, it will start waiting for it. And the point in uh, doing a loop over bounds uh, before the loop over CPU uh, guarant guarantee that we avoid uh, deadlocks and that uh, all data will be sent and received uh, properly. Also, as uh, some uh, implementation detail details, uh, the MPI communications are using uh, asynchronous uh, communications, uh, which is not mandatory because the algorithm already guarantees that uh, it will work with uh, synchronous uh, communication, but uh, it may be faster with uh, asynchronous communications. Um, yeah, uh, also, uh, since the correlated band form a block around the um, Fermi level, not all CPUs will use correlated bands, and the CPUs that don't will just work as in DMFT. In DFT. And, uh, yeah. and so I spent a lot of time uh, validating this method. Uh, first of all, I uh, compared the result with the previous methods that only use uh, K parallelization. Um, so I uh, really uh, go uh, far to validate it, uh, comparing the, for example, for the energy, the total energy until the 11th decimal and uh, on 100 steps of uh, convergence. Um, I also tried uh, a lot of different parameters to see how stable was uh, the method. So different uh, algorithm, uh, different condition of uh, different type of system with uh, sp spin orbit or not, etc. Uh, and, and also with different uh, configuration of CPUs because I wanted to see if uh, any any configuration you can have uh, would work. And I implemented two tests that, uh, try, uh, that uh, check that this feature work. Uh, finally, I think you all know uh, how well can uh, KGB uh, improve your performances. So I just wanted to quickly show you how drastic it can be on big systems. So here is a uh, big system in terms of DMFT, it's eight atom of vanadium. Um, and uh, the K points are really few. So with 48 processes, uh, you, uh, you have an increasing of uh, the computation time when you try to increase again the, the number of processes. Uh, but as soon as you use uh, KGB parallelization, you just see that the orange part uh, disappear and the red part became uh, really uh, tiny. The orange part, the orange part is the macro part of the computation, and uh, the red part is uh, uh, everything I didn't measure. So it's mostly the diagonalization of the Hamiltonian, and we can see that. Uh, with this number of processes, we have a real uh, increase in performances that was not reachable uh, with DMFT before. Um, so uh, finally, I want to uh, thank a lot uh, Jordan Bieder and uh, Marc Torin for their, their help uh, during this work, and of course, uh, Bernard Amadon for his supervision uh, all along the, this work. Thank you. 